You're watching the Vidim Vlog with my friend Seek, the best source for all things symbiote related. Don't forget to catch me in Sony's Venom in U.S. theaters on October 5th, 2018. And also, don't forget to check me out in theaters right now, Shock and Awe, written and directed by Rob Reiner, also starring Woody Harrelson, James Marsden, and Tommy Lee Jones. Thanks for watching. Enjoy the show. Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to the episode of Spitting Venom, aka the Venom Vlog. And today, the reason I have this slightly different setup is because I'm gonna sit here and read as many comments as I can from the video where I talked about the description of the new Venom footage that was shown at San Diego Comic-Con. And uh, luckily, we can probably breeze through some of these really quickly. I know I answered almost everyone on here. I tried to get almost everybody at least once if I could, but for those who didn't, I'll try to respond here in this video. But uh, this is going to be just like what we do with trailer reactions. I do a trailer reaction, you guys leave comments, and then I make a video where I read your comments from that specific video to hear your point of view, because I know some of you guys have different things that you like about the trailers and stuff. And with this way, I gave you some of the descriptions, and some of you guys had different opinions than I had. And so this is a great way, I think, to include you guys into this, because this show isn't just about me. We are all Venom. And so this, that's what I want to do with this show, is include you guys more. So we'll do this again when the actual trailer drops which uh, a lot of people did ask me, hey, when do you think the trailer is going to drop? Uh, apparently there's a new Twitter account called Eddie's Clubhouse, which is a nod to the comic books. Uh, in the comic books, there's a, a little letters column at the back of them in the 90s, and they introduced this thing called Eddie's Clubhouse, and it's where you could write Eddie Brock personally. So apparently Eddie Brock is running this Twitter account, and it's a way they're using it to promote the movie and stuff. And they dropped a little bit of e information this past week at Comic-Con when Ruben Fleischer did like a little intro for the Twitter channel. Uh, then they also announced that possibly in a week we will get this trailer. And again, like I told you guys, it was soon. I was told we would get it soon and that it wouldn't be exactly what they showed at Comic-Con because obviously that footage isn't 100% done yet, but there will be some things from that trailer that will, I mean, from that footage that will be in this new trailer. So definitely keep an eye out for that and we will do a trailer reaction to it as soon as it drops. Uh, as long as I'm you know home and I'm not at work, I will definitely do that. And then also I will, uh, you know, we'll do another video like this where I read your comments. So when that video drops and we do a trailer reaction, flood it with comments and I will do another video like this where I read as many of those comments as I can. And before we get into this, I want to give a couple quick shout outs. One to Sona the Wolf, who is a longtime subscriber on this channel uh, ever since we started the Venom vlog. So about seven months, but it feels like forever because we've done 200 episodes plus in seven months on this show. And Sona's birthday is today, uh, July 25th. So happy birthday, Sona. Uh, thank you for all the support, for commenting on pretty much all my videos, for going back and re-watching all of them two or three times, some of them even. Hopefully you're enjoying them on the re-watches. Hopefully there's some fun information in there and you're picking up new things each time you watch them. Uh, so thank you very much for the endless support and happy birthday to you. I really appreciate having you on this channel. And then the other shout out, of course, goes to Ariadne, who did the intro to this video. If you saw that, uh, Ariadne plays part of uh, Eddie Brock's like um, kind of documentary crew that is in the new film and you probably saw her picture I posted it at the beginning with when she did her intro but also I'll post it here uh, that's the shot from the trailer that she was in and uh, she's part of Eddie Brock's like documentary crew who gets escorted out of the Life Foundation interview that they did and so she was nice enough to you know take time to record the intro for me so I very much appreciate that and to see some of these actors that are in the Venom movie that you know that I've created this show for and that I've been so jazzed for to see some of them reach out to me and not only do this but also kind of you know become friends with me in a way on Instagram has been amazing so please follow her on Instagram show her some love also so Jared some love he did intro before and I have a second intro that Jared recorded and I'm going to put that in front of our um, trailer reaction video whenever the trailer drops and then uh, I will play some of these intros you know I'll every I won't play them on every episode but I'll spread them out a little bit I'll pepper them out so that way you still get those guys coming in plugging the movie and getting you guys attached to some of these other characters because you know I know a lot of people out there it's it's not easy working in Hollywood you know getting these roles is a very big deal and these guys have other projects too so I want to make sure that you get to know who these people are and that you go out and support them in their other roles so please do that for Ariadne and Jared and anyone else I can try to grab for you guys to do intro for this show I will definitely do that so now without further ado let's dive into these comments so the first comment I'm going to address because I think like four or five of you wrote me maybe even more of you on other videos but I think on this video I had about four or five comments people were asking me if I saw the leaked image 
that came out of Venom, uh, which I'm not going to share on here uh, because I promised that I wouldn't share anything from that footage. And since that did leak, I didn't want to share any of that. Um, so uh, so th for that reason alone, I'm not going to post a picture here. I think I retweeted on Twitter. You know, I'm on Twitter now with Venom Vlog. I think I retweeted it once, but that was actually an accident. I meant to just like it. I didn't mean to retweet it, but then I, I you know, fat thumbs and then I hit the button again. I was like, okay, I'm, I'm gonna, it's going to take some time getting used to being back on Twitter on my phone. Um, on my Kindle, I can handle it better. All the everything's all spaced out and buttons are bigger and stuff, uh, obviously. But uh, so yes, I have seen the leak image, but obviously that is from the footage that I've seen too. So it wasn't that new to me, but it is cool. It's super super cool, and I'm glad at least something of it kind of got out there. Even though I know that's kind of bad in a way too, is having these images leak because there's you know reasons that these things are you know kept under wraps. Uh, but it was I'm glad people at least got something and they had a reaction to it. So uh, I don't know if that was a actual leak or a forced leak just to get people interested uh, but either way I saw a lot of positive feedback on it and that's great any positive feedback for this movie is great and everyone's very jazzed for this footage so hopefully the next trailer even though it won't be exactly what they showed at comic-con hopefully it'll be good enough to where people are still talking about this movie in a positive way and getting anticipated for it because that's obviously good for all of us um, so what I also have here is, uh, you know, Ash GB says, I want this guy to get more subs. He deserves it all. Thank you very much, Ash. You know, I, I, I mean, I mean, that means a lot to me. I, I don't know what else to say other than thank you. Um, I, I, it's, it's just a goofy show. I sit here in front of my camera and I record at the end of a long day of work. I literally just worked like a beast mode today, uh, worked a long shift, very long shift. And then I have to open tomorrow. Uh, so I'm kind of forfeiting sleep tonight to make some videos for you guys. Uh, but it's worth it to me. I have Friday off, and so Friday I'll try to catch up on videos, and hopefully we'll get that trailer Friday. I don't know if it'll be this week. It might be next week or the week after, but any time when that trailer drops, hopefully I'll be around to react to it as soon as possible with you guys. But thank you for saying I should have more subs. I mean, I... I I like the pace we're growing at. I like meeting new people. I like people coming in slowly and, you know, keeping a positive attitude. I know eventually we'll get to a point where people will start yelling in the comments, but that'll probably be the day where you really see me police the comment section more uh, because I'm all for people having different opinions, but I certainly, you know, I know it's unavoidable to a certain extent of people yelling at each other on, on, uh, on you know, on YouTube and stuff, but uh, it, that's not the kind of vibe I want here. You know, I want us all to be able to hear each other out. And, and that's kind of why I do these, where I read your comments. So I know some of you guys will be on opposite sides of the fence of me uh, when it comes to some of my opinions. And I want to read about them. You know, I want to hear what you guys think because this show isn't just about me if we're all Venom, like I said at the beginning. So, um... So yeah, and then some of you guys asked me specific questions about the trailer, you know, about Eddie Brock, you know, like, uh, you know, what was the battle brutal? Was Eddie, did Venom's character look like he was being more strategic in fighting against uh, Riot and things like that? Um, so I did answer those. So those I'll kind of leave in the comment section. So if you want to go back in that video, I'll put a link down below to it. You can go back and read the comments and see some of my responses because I talked about how the trailer was, you know, the stuff I cut out because that video would have been like 45 minutes long. And I was like, ah, I know my videos tend to get long, but I want to trim it down to like 20 to 25 minutes was my goal so I had to cut out some of the stuff where I talked about the convenience store and Eddie walking in and I figured that was covered pretty well in most other sites and I really wanted to sink my teeth into like the brutal stuff uh, because that got me way more interested and more excited and I figured that would be the same thing you guys would be into too so that's why my video was a little bit more focused there but I'm glad some of you guys asked me questions about that you know and and so that way I could answer in the comment section about you know more things that the trailer showed that I didn't talk about in my video this comment I really, really loved because I can't even believe I didn't think about it in the moment. If you remember in my description, I talked about how Riot jumps body to body. You never really know who you know he's possessing at the time or what body he's in. And uh, I, I'm akin that to the movie Fallen with Denzel Washington, which I really, really love that movie. And I, that was the first thing that popped in my mind. But I can't believe this didn't pop in my mind to Hammer. Uh, says or two T Hammer says uh, the way the way you describe Riot in this reminds me of how the Venom clone was portrayed in the 2003 Daniel one uh, Daniel Way run, jumping from host to host, taking over instantly and never knowing who it is. Not to mention Riot is gray and looks like Venom, and the Venom clone in Way's uh, in Way's run was rather grayish in later issues when next to Venom. Maybe they uh, maybe they took the inspiration from that Venom clone for this iteration of Riot. Uh, which is really cool. I heard, I think Ruben Fleischer mentioned Riot and 
Plan of the Symbiotes in the same sentence. I'm gonna have to go back and rewatch the interviews and I'll make a separate episode or two on those later this week, I promise you guys. Um, but uh, but so I wanna see how he's trying to connect that out because I don't remember Riot being in Plan of the Symbiotes. Um, so I don't know if he's maybe crossed his wires there or maybe I just misheard him, possibly. But hearing this was awesome. I was like, you know, I like that Daniel Way run. I know a lot of you guys don't. Uh, we covered it recently on the show where we read through those comics and, and, and you know kind of discussed each section of them or each chapter of them. And I admit that in the end, it kind of fell apart. All of the things that were set up weren't paid off because the run was canceled. So I think Daniel Way just kind of just like let it go and was like, oh, I'm not gonna wrap any of these threads up. I'm just gonna let them go. And maybe one day I'll return to, uh, return to these threads or some other writer will. Uh, and unfortunately some haven't, although we do get that clone does come back later in the comics as Maniac, which is really cool. And it's a fan favorite character as well. Um, so uh, I like that, you know, that to the, that you pointed that out. That's really cool because I like that run and apparently Two Hammer liked that run too. And, uh, and so we were talking a little bit about that in the comment section. But yeah, that would be awesome. Like uh, that would be, that's a cool inspiration because you're right, it was like the movie The Thing and Ruben Fleischer did say that this is kind of like it, a John Carpenter feel, which you know, which obviously you might be referring to the thing with that. And then also he said Cronenberg with the fly uh, were inspirations for him for this movie. So that'd be really cool if if they were doing a thing approach, which is what Daniel Way did in his Venom run with the clone of Venom. So that I would be okay with that. I know some people might not be okay with that, uh, but uh, maybe on some subliminal level that did influence them and that would be really cool. Um, will the other symbiotes be in the movie or at least have references to them other than uh, Riot says Nova Dra or asks Nova Dragon and Nova I, I don't know if you saw the interviews and we'll and, and I'll cover them because there was interviews with uh, Tom Hardy, Ruben Fleischer, and Riz Ahmed. There was one on stage at the, pan, uh, at the panel, which I will cover in a future video coming up. And then I'll also cover the one where they were outside by the beachfront talking out there too. Uh, so there's two different interviews and we'll do videos on each one of them and talk about the information that was mentioned in each one. Uh, but yes, they do reference at the panel that there are other symbiotes in this movie and that you're not going to just see Riot, but uh, that this is based on Lethal Protector and there's going to be more. In fact, in this trailer, they show a woman who I think shoots spikes out of her back and they're symbiotic, like carnage looking spikes in a way. And that makes me think that maybe Agony or Scream is in it. I couldn't remember or recognize the woman. I couldn't see too, too well. Um, so I didn't know if it was like Michelle Lee because she's supposed to be playing Donna Diego, who is Scream. So I couldn't really tell who the actress was, but it'll be really interesting to see, uh, you know, if they show that in the next trailer and we can get a frame by frame look at it because uh, that's what I need to get some of these details down. Uh, with my memory and my brain, I need something that I can just watch and study like crazy uh, to, you know, do an in-depth video on. So we will definitely cover that topic again. But yes, other symbiotes, pretty pretty sure there are other symbiotes in the movie. Um, so let's see. And then we talked about the ultimate look. I think Nova says, yeah, he kind of has, he looks like the ultimate Venom. And he is, uh, some of you other mentioned that too, he's a cross between ultimate Venom and Matt Gargan Venom. And that is the stuff we're going to be talking about coming up soon. And there's a reason why I kind of stretched out the Matt Gargan stuff. I had heard about this that, you know, and we had theorized a while back that Venom is going to be black with just, um, you know, just the veins going through him. And someone contacted me and said, you're, you're very dead on with your description of what Venom's going to look like in this movie, even though we haven't revealed the full look of him. Uh, one of your videos, you described how you think he's going to look, and he's pretty much going to look like that. And they were nice enough to tell me that. And I, you know, was keeping that information until we saw more footage. And now we probably will with the next trailer. And we all know that now he's covered, you know, in veins head to toe. And that is kind of, uh, there is some kind of shape on him, but it's not really a design so much. And there is veins, you know, coming out of it. Um, and so, uh, so we will see more of that probably in the next trailer get a better look at them uh, but they are doing a cross between you know they're doing an amalgam of a bunch of different versions of Venom obviously that makes sense too because the character has this 30 year history so they're kind of pulling visually from different eras of Venom and the way he acts you know obviously Eddie Brock had some things where he was threatening to like eat brains and all this stuff and he got pretty dark and, and grisly um, but you know, Matt Gargan certainly was someone who would like bite the face off of a person. And that's what they're going for in this movie. So it's neat to see like an amalgam of all these things because everyone has their own favorite version of Venom. So it's neat when you're in adapting something like this to put a little bit of something in there for every generation of fans of the character. So again, we had a lot of people that were upset we didn't get the trailer, which I totally share your you know disappointment, absolutely. But hopefully, like I said, we won't have to wait too much longer and hopefully the wait will be worth it. And I think it will be because we'll get to see some variation on the stuff that was shown at Comic-Con. And then some of these things that were shown at Comic-Con 
could remain a visual surprise for a lot of you guys out later on. Um, so we had Cranjus McBasketball and Artur and Daniel being like, hey, you know, I'm kind of disappointed the trailer didn't come out. When do you think the next one will? And like I said uh, earlier, probably in like a week or two. I'm thinking three at the most, you know, for, uh, for whatever reason, I was just like, when I hear soon, I don't, I don't know what that means sometimes. Sometimes soon is a week to somebody or a day to somebody. But I think I like I typically I just go like, yeah, it's, if someone says soon, I imagine the next three weeks it'll get done. But maybe that's just because I ha that's how I handle soon. When I tell somebody, oh, I'll get to it soon. Sometime in the next three weeks, I'll do it. That's kind of that's my rule. So maybe that's why I project it onto other people. Um, and so we have ESC Rika Queen here says, uh, uh, I'm so excited to watch the trailer. Oh my God, what you're saying seems amazing. Honestly, Riot does suit Riz Ahmed better. I feel like Carlton Drake is more like a dark villain. Can you go further by commenting Riot, Riot's appearance? Was he taller than Venom? Does he look like Venom, but grayish? So yes, so the thing I mentioned, uh, and I don't know if I went into that much detail, but yes, he is taller than Venom. Uh, he is burlier a little bit than Venom. Um, he does kind of remind me a little bit of the clone thing now that uh, that's, uh, Two Hammer pointed that out. And he is he was grayish, silverish, and I can't remember what the color was that broke up. He, he had veins and like a design on him too, um, but some of that wasn't finished. So it was like it, it, some of the stuff that was shown, it, it looked like you could tell like okay that's a placeholder image there or that's like a you know this there uh it's like it's not finished there or the textures haven't been on added on there um so it was like it was it wasn't great some of it so I, it's hard to fully describe what he looked like but based on what i saw yeah that's kind of what he looked like but he was he looked bigger than venom and uh the thing is with him is that they're trying to make him more imposing they, they did say and if you go back and read like the wikipedia and some of the other stuff of riot they will say that he was drawn bigger. He was a burly, you know, symbiote when they did the 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 five of them in the Lethal Protector storyline. So they're, yeah, I think Ruben Fleischer and them were like looking at the five and they were like, which one looks alpha male-ish or alpha-ish to, uh, you know, to give Eddie Brock a real run for his money. And since they never really wrote Riot as a main character in a serious way until maybe later on when they did Carnage USA. And remember, even at first, Riot didn't have a name. I think don't think a lot of people remember that. I think he had... um the toy like named him or the fa or fans named him or something like that. But I don't think he was originally right off the bat named if I remember correctly until like a couple issues later or the next storyline later. Um, so I think he was kind of like you know, riot just became his name um, out of all the, all the other ones who were kind of named from the get go. I think I'm remembering that right. I remember there was being some weird thing with him in the beginning, uh, which is why I always had trouble remembering his name. If you go back and watch some of my earlier episodes, I always rem uh, mentioned Phage and uh, and Lasher and stuff and Agony um, and uh, Scream, and I always would forget Riot's name, and I think that's kind of the reason uh, for it. So uh, so it's cool. They're, they're basically looking at him as a clean slate, and they're like, oh, we can build off of this character because there's not a lot there you know, from the comics to deal with. So there's now we can expand the character and make it more interesting. And I'm kind of wondering, they, I think they alluded to a backstory with him and the Venom symbiote on the planet Clintar. Um, so maybe there's some kind of backstory where they're both prisoners or they're both captured. Uh, they don't like each other or they're brothers. You know, maybe there's something going on there too that might add a depth to the movie. And maybe that's why they chose Riot over Scream or something else. Maybe there's a story reason that kind of led them to picking Riot over all the other ones. So it'll be interesting to see. Of course, I'm speculating right now, but it'll be interesting to see where they go with that. This comment I really, really loved. Uh, Baruto Uzumaki commented, I hope there's a scene where Eddie drives a truck and when he gets angered by a truck driver who honked beside Eddie's truck, he transforms into Venom and honks back at the driver. As the driver looks at Eddie's truck, the driver screams after seeing Venom driving the truck, and then Venom grabs the driver with his tendrils and eats the guy off screen. Kind of like a dark humor, isn't it? Uh, also, Venom driving a truck should be an homage to the 90s Spider-Man animated series. So basically, Baruto was saying like, hey, that scene from the 90s show where, where, where Venom jumped into a truck and was like honking the horn, they need to do a version of that uh, just to play up that dark humor, which I'm totally cool with. I mean, I don't know if that's going to be in the movie. I don't think so, but that would be, we saw the motorcycle thing. I think that's probably all we're going to get as far as Eddie Brock driving a vehicle with the suit. Uh, but that the visual of that is funny. I thought that was great in the cartoon as well. Um, 
And then uh, Dark Side Effect says, uh, sounds awesome so far. What do you think about the sides of Venom? Is he too big or does he fit at all? Um, for me, I think he looked great. Uh, he's big for sure. He's very big, uh, especially in these later scenes. He keeps growing and, and, you know, it seems like he's evolving. If you go back to, I think, episode around 100 of my show or something like that, we talked about, I made a whole episode about the evolution of Venom and how Ruben Fleischer said that the movie The Fly was kind of an inspiration, the Cronenberg thing. And so what I was thinking of is, is Riz Ahmed is this mad scientist, kind of like Jeff Goldblum was in that movie, and he's experimenting on these symbiotes, and maybe he creates Riot or amplifies Riot's strength, and that's why Riot is stronger than, than Venom in this movie, because Venom got away, it rode, you know, rode away on Eddie Brock somehow and escaped, and so Riot becomes the one that is the test subject for Riz Ahmed's character, and maybe he amplifies the abilities the, the symbiote already has and maybe adds some new ones, like the quick transference and stuff. Um, so... To me, I but I talked about the evolution and how Venom is going to look pretty much one way the movie, but just evolve in a way. So you see him maybe get bigger, or his tongue gets longer, or his eyes shift to a different shape by the end. So it's not really like them really making four different Venoms, but just one Venom that consistently you know, shifts throughout the movie to find you know its place. It's like, all right, this is the form I want to be in. This is the form that... It makes the most sense. And so that's what I'm hoping they do with the movie and something we talked about before. So that's what I think with Venom is that why that's why we see a little bit of inconsistencies. One, they're still working on the visual effects, obviously. But in that scene where he grabs Scott Hayes and he grows up, you know, grows above him, he's like, we are Venom. He clearly grows like another two feet. And I imagine Scott Hayes is like, you know, playing a character who's around six foot. So that's like an eight foot Venom. And then maybe we'll see Venom even go bigger because when he was up against uh, Riot there, he looked bigger too. But Riot even looked bigger than him. So I'm thinking maybe like if he's between eight and 10 feet later on in the movie, it's that evolution, you know, escalating uh, in his process throughout the film. So I hope that's the case. I would like to see a shift in Venom and see him find his look as the movie progresses because it's two beings occupying the same body and they're obviously not going to be comfortable with it. It's like a shoe. It's like putting on a shoe. You got to break it in. And I feel like that's what I mean when I say evolution is it's the shoe has to settle and and pick a, a mold to be in around your foot, you know, or whatever. Um, so yeah, weird analogies, I know, but that's kind of my thought process as far as the evolution goes. Um, and then we have Jay Miller said, uh, hopefully the tra uh, trailer drops next week. Description sounds awesome. Also, RIP John Schnepp, a true legend. And I did want to actually mention this in a video. It's been hard for me to talk about. I actually... It's hard for me to deal, talk about death things. Like, I have a, a disconnect there. Um, on some levels, but John was actually a friend of mine. And so I know there was an episode where I was like, oh, you know, John Snap mentioned the, that Tom Holland went to on set and everyone was, you know, blowing that up and, and saying like, you know, that that was true and, you know, everything. And even though there was no pictures or no proof of it, uh, but he had a source that told him all this stuff. And I know, you know, uh, he went and did that. We made an episode where I talked about it and I wasn't really like believing exactly what he saw but that never took away from how much i respected that guy i love his movie uh, that he did his you know all of metalocalypse obviously i love metalocalypse but his documentary movie he did about the superman movie uh that never got made with tim uh, tim burton and nick cage and uh and i i really liked the guy a lot i even knew him you know, before uh, even coming out to LA in a roundabout way and uh, and through like, you know, Adult Swim and all those people. And so he was just a really nice guy. And he would actually, if I would post something about Venom on Instagram, he would like it. And then a couple times he messaged me and was like, hey dude, I saw your latest episode. How'd you get that news? You've been scouring IMDb. That's really great. Um, he definitely was rooting for me on this show. And, I, and, and the big thing is I met him through a, a Th kind of like a group of friends that used to meet out here called Comic Book Sunday. I think it ended. Uh, this guy named Ben used to host it and it was a really great time and I was invited to all of them and unfortunately with health and work schedules and stuff I was only able to make it to a handful of them usually to show up and drop off free comics or graphic novels and just kind of hey guys here's some books some that I worked on some that other people worked on you guys can have them share them whatever that was kind of the whole point it was it was a bunch of you know people in the industry and people in the comic world and movie world and TV world coming together and hanging out on a Sunday and talking talking comics and just hanging out and, and getting, you know, getting to know each other. And I saw John there a ton of times and uh, I asked him to be on one of my panels uh, five years ago. I hosted a panel at Comic-Con and uh, I was the host of it and I had Matt Hawkins there and I had a lot of other great creative people there, people that worked on video games, music, and that was the whole point. It was a Kickstarter panel and John was there talking about his movie, uh, Whatever Happened to the, or it wasn't Whatever Happened, that was a, the Neil Gaiman Superman story. Um, but he talked about his documentary on the Superman movie that never got made, the Superman Lives movie. And and uh, he was just a great guy. So 
his passing really hurt. Uh, he also died in a very similar way that way my aunt died, although my aunt died uh, after giving birth to her son, and then she went home and then had like some kind of attack or relapse, was brought back to the hospital and kept on life support for a few days before they pulled the plug on her, and this was around the time that I was sick with a lot of my health issues. Um, so uh, hearing this, it brought back memories of that too, of someone who is, is you know, hooked up to these machines and, and only alive because of those machines. And then the difficult choice of the, his wonderful wife and friends had to make to pull that plug. Um, you know, it was, it was hard to read that. So yes, rest in peace, John Schnepp. Uh, sweaties unite he was a really good dude and if you have anything nice to please say in the comments please do and then definitely you know go on um you know colliders videos and any other things he's worked on and uh, leave a hashtag sweaties unite he was a really awesome dude and i know some of you out there you know have this anti-collider thing anti you know big news thing on youtube but uh there are good people that work on those shows and john is definitely one of the good ones and i like that guy a lot and he's definitely going to be missed uh for me and i know a lot of you guys so i appreciate jay miller that you leaving that comment and showing love for john because uh I, you know i appreciate it on a lot of levels and uh and i know there are other people that watch the show that appreciate that too all right, so trying to move on from that, uh, we have some other comments here. One from Rafael Zabani who says, so no webbing and no spider symbol, huh? Well, uh, it's okay, I guess. They're really going towards a sci-fi horror kind of stuff, and I like it, to be honest. We are Venom. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's going to be a departure. I mean, we kind of knew some of that from the beginning, uh, but then it got convoluted for a while there, and there was a lot of things out there, people uh, you know, putting in their own stuff, putting in their own theories, trying to pass them off as true, trying to pass it off as that you know they had a, a source and stuff. And there was a lot of that going on. I saw a lot of channels kind of uh, piggybacking off each other for these same stories that I was like, well, there's no proof of any of this. Like, you know, like you're just taking someone's word for it. And, uh, and you know, we got to be more cautious when it comes out. We got to more, be more cautious to buying into information that comes across that way. Um, so, yeah, it's it's going to be different. But I, I think, you know, a lot of people were saying like, oh, this is not going to be something the main, the mass audiences are going to like. This will be something that no matter what hardcore Venom fans will probably go check out and mass audiences won't. And I actually have a different opinion on that because um, I know there were some comments saying that and, and I disagree wholeheartedly. I think hardcore Venom fans um, are definitely, you know, will probably support it. But there are some hardcore Venom fans that are not excited for this movie. You know, if you have not watched RNS Entertainment, he's a good friend of ours and he has a different opinion of me on almost everything that we talk about. Uh, but he's a great guy and we have civil you know debates about it and conversations about it and we laugh at each other's opinion we're like dude why why do you like this you know and then he's like why do you like that and you know, we go back and forth so um you know check out his channel he's a really sweet guy and he's super awesome um but he um you know, he, he's not excited for this movie, and he's a very big Venom fan, probably even bigger than me uh, at this point, and he's a, he's just a super, du super duper cool guy, um, but, uh, but, you know, there's, I, so I would say the masses, though, if this looks good, and it has Tom Hardy, and they're like, oh, I recognize him, that's Mad Max, or that's, you know, he's from this movie, or he was Bane, or whatever, I think it's not, I don't think this turns off mass audiences, to be honest with you. I know some mass audience will be like, oh, Venom, that's like a Spider-Man thing. But, uh, you know, I don't think that matters to them going into the movie. If they walk out of the movie and go, oh, it was cool, but where's Spider-Man? I thought Venom fought Spider-Man. I feel like that's the kind of reaction mass audiences give, is that they'll probably go see the movie on brand recognition and actor recognition, and then they'll come out with those questions. They won't necessarily go in with them unless, like, you know, some of the average fan you know movie fan might read up a little on it before they go see the movie but on average no like people will just go like oh venom's out yeah i'll go see that you know i only can see one movie this week or this month uh yeah sure i'll go see venom it looked cool the last trailer looked cool you know uh, big monster fighting bad guys yeah that seems sweet i think it'll have a different uh, a different reaction i think mass audiences might actually check this out uh, mass audiences who are able to go see it, you know, with it being rated R and stuff, um, and who it appeals to. Uh, there'll certainly be a certain demographic that might be appealed to this movie more than a other demographics, but I think overall, I think uh, this will pull in a comic book fan base uh, on many levels, And but I think that mass audience might still give this movie a chance and be the saving grace of this movie, and m might be why this movie makes money. It'll be really interesting to see how this movie does here and overseas based on the content. 
uh, that'll be really interesting. And obviously word of mouth will help it keep legs as they go through October with other movies coming out in November and December. So it doesn't have a ton of competition in October, uh, maybe up until Halloween as far as like similar fan bases. So it might have a couple weeks. It probably could stand for a little while at least, maybe at least be number one for two weekends in a row. Uh, but that'll come down to good word of mouth and uh, you know how much it appeals to the mass audiences. But I feel on the different angle on that. I feel like the mass audiences might be more inclined to see this because it doesn't seem like it's bogged down with all this continuity and this Spider-Man and oh does this connect to the other things it seems like a nice standalone you know action horror movie and I feel like that might just appeal to enough people to make it a success Taffy Venom says and I saw you leave comments like this in other videos because I do peruse other videos that talk about Venom um, especially I usually wait till after I post mine that way I don't get their like you know feedback in my head or what their criticisms are I don't have it in my head when I'm making my videos I try to go in with my personal opinion that's unaffected by others and not hearing their voices in my head while I'm making my video but then I'll go and watch other videos on it and I'll see some of you guys comment on these other videos which is great um, so I appreciate you guys you know spreading that Venom love too and spreading your opinions around that's very good um, so Taffy says, I'm not sure how I feel about them making Riot a superior to Venom. If I remember correctly, um, all of the five symbiotes are individually weaker than Venom, and I think it would be a lot more enjoyable and interesting watching Venom juggle slash multitask between the five symbiotes who don't give him a challenge in a one-on-one, -on -one, but give him a challenge together. And you know what? That's very interesting. I, and here's why I like that too, is because... Um, Normally in movies, you'll see like the X-Men have to team up to fight Apocalypse or, you know, or, you know, work together to fight like a Sentinel, although we haven't really seen that in the movie. Um, I kind of in Days of Future Past a little bit, but they didn't really work together. Uh, but you normally see a, the good guy team working to fight one bad guy like Thanos and Avengers Infinity War. Uh, you know, they're all coming together and hitting them from different angles and using their powers. Uh, so for me, um, I would say that... Uh, I ha what's neat about this is that it's the five bad guys teaming up on the one good guy. Um, but then again, Ruben Fleischer did say that there's no heroes in this movie and that it's mostly anti-heroes and that you're going to see Venom and Eddie trying to do the right thing, or at least Eddie is, but then he gets seduced by this new power, this new life form that's in him and gets kind of corrupted by the power. And it's about the fall of Eddie Brock. And that's obviously, so that way maybe there can be a redeeming moment at the end of the story where he doesn't fall completely uh, so that he does stay in that anti-hero category. And then maybe later on when they do like Carnage and stuff, you're like, oh wow, Venom's going off to be the bad guy. That's the route they're going. But then Carnage comes along and it by default, like in the comics, it makes Eddie look more like a good guy than a bad guy because Carnage is obviously far, far worse. So to me, um, you know, that would be a cool thing, but it makes sense also to simplify it. You do, out of those five, it does make sense from a story standpoint and structure to have one major threat because obviously Riz Ahmed is one guy. You have Carlton Drake is the one who ruins Eddie Brock's life. It's like, you know, it's like saying that, you know, oh, I love Venom versus Spider-Man, but it would be great if Venom fought five Spider-Mans. It's like, yeah, but only one Spider-Man ruined his life. And so for an arc and for a, a you know, character arc and, a, and a, a moment for the character in the story and closure, you kind of need it to be sometimes one. It just helps simplify it. Uh, yeah, you can do it multiple and it has worked before. Like the crow, he has to go kill like five people to get his full revenge. Uh, but this is not exactly going to be like that. One guy ruins his life. Ed, you know, Eddie Brock's life is ruined by uh, Carlton Drake. And so it makes sense to pick one of these five symbiotes and be like, all right, we got to bond it to Drake at the end of the story so that Eddie can get his closure and, and kind of get his life back or at least try to get his life back um, by fighting the bad guy. So to me, I get both sides. I, I totally agree. It would be visually neat to see that, but I promise you, you're going to see Eddie Brock fight other symbiotes in this movie. Maybe not all five at the same time, but you'll you'll see it. <laughs> Plus, I don't know if that's good strategy. I would say they're all probably equal power, um, and that looks like how they're going to play it in this movie is that they're all kind of equal power, but Riz Ahmed's character, Carlton Drake, experiments on some of them and enhances what they can do, and that seems to be what's going on. So that's why maybe Eddie and you know Venom could make axes this time around, because maybe he was experimenting on and uh, kind of taught how to do that through these experiments. We don't know exactly what the Life Foundation is doing with these symbiotes, but we are going to talk more about Life Foundation and Riz Ahmed's character, Carlton Drake, in an upcoming episode when we talk about the panel and the information we got there. So don't you worry. We're going to get into that big time.
Venom Panhead Gaming says, also in the trailer, did Venom lick someone's face? He did. He licked a dude's face. Um, he's kind of toying with them, threatening him. This is the guy in the convenience store. Uh, and so there was like, th this lady's like, oh, Eddie, you you know, you look like crap. And he's like, yeah. He's like, I, you know, I'm still going through whatever. Or I don't feel good. And she's like, you should, you, you know, like, I told you to meditate. You should meditate. And he's like, yeah, fine. When I get home, I'll meditate or whatever. And there was like some guy causing, you know, some, some disturbance i guess and uh, and so they cut so i don't know exactly if this is all one scene or if it's cut up in other scenes maybe it's like a, a a thread where it's just like oh some guy's just like you know causing trouble at this like you know little you know place that eddie goes to every day because it's a corner store near his house which you know i i live in la and i there was a corner store i used to go into all the time that was from down the street from my house where i'd go and pick up like soda or like water or, you know or like orange juice so usually liquids i usually bought a lot of drinks there because it was always hot in that last apartment so i was always drinking stuff to kind of stay hydrated um but uh yeah so that reminded me of that so i think it was something like that he like licks some dude's face and then like uh, threatens to like eat him and and the, <laughs> the guy like doesn't I don't know if he doesn't take it seriously or he's freaking out or whatever and then Eddie like turns into venom and eats his face off so yeah there's some there's some fun visuals in, in that uh, footage but some of it wasn't done either and some of it went by really quickly so um so I didn't get good looks at, at some of the stuff but yeah he totally licked the dude's face and then venom also says uh uh, that intro surprised me with Jared Benkins. Awesome. He seems like a really cool guy. And he really is. And him and Ariadne, who just did the intro to this video, I thank them from the bottom of my heart because uh, they watched the show and they actually reached out to me and uh, or, uh, Jared reached out to me and talked to me about something else. And then I said, hey, I know this is a long shot, um, but do you think you would like to make a video like introing my show? And he was like, dude, I would love to do that. I'd love to be on the show like that. And I was blown away. I was like, dude, that is like the nicest thing to hear. <laughs> like, uh, you know, because to me, I'm just like, oh, I just make these fun videos at home. There's no production value here. I just use my phone and I, I come home from a long day at work and make these videos. And it's nice to see people enjoy them and like them. And, and that means a lot to me because I feel like I'm like, oh, I'm not really doing much. I try my best to put effort into these and edit them and make them look semi-interesting, except for this video, which is going to be me talking with like the banner around me and stuff. Uh, but, uh, you know, I try to do things that are a little different than other YouTubers do. I try my best, I, but I'm still learning about editing and there's still a lot of things I'm learning. And then there's things I forget because of my brain and my memory. So I'll, for, I'll do things one way and then I won't do it for a couple videos and I forget how to do it. Um, but it was, it was really meant a lot to me for them to, you know, to do those intros. And then when Ariadne and I talked, you know, I said the same thing. I was like, Hey, I, Jared did this video and she saw it. And she's like, Oh my God, Jared. And she commented on Instagram, like Jared's in the video. Awesome. And then I was like, Oh, I got to get you and Mr. Bats in there. And she was like, totally write me right now. So I wrote her a message and she said, yes. And so now I got to get Mr. Bats, man. Like I, I'm coming for you, Bats. Um, you know, you, you're an awesome dude. I follow you on Instagram too. So I'm, I'm going to try to get another, at least one more intro from an actor from this movie for you guys. And that's just me trying that stuff to, as a thank you and to give you something that other channels, you know, may not be able to give you. Uh, I'm trying to do that for you guys because you guys make this show what it is and you keep me going and you keep me making episodes. So I, if, as long as I can, you know, as long as people are cool with it and their, their agents are cool with it and everyone, you know, gets approval, then I will try to get more things like that for you guys uh, for this show to keep things interesting and, and keep uh, keep you coming back for more to see what other surprises I can get for you. All right, I'm going to fire through some of these as fast as I can. We have Draco that says trailer sounds pure fire, and I could definitely see it dropping like in two weeks-ish. And like I said, I think some of you theorize that it might drop this weekend with uh, Mission Impossible, which could be the case. Uh, that is a big movie and probably one of the last big movies coming out. Other people saying that there's other Sony movies coming out in the next few weeks that it could be attached to. But I personally don't even think it needs a movie to come out. If you remember, that last trailer was just put online. It wasn't in front of any movie. They were theorizing that it might come out you know, in front of Infinity War, which I think it might have. I didn't see it in front of my screening of Infinity War, uh, but it came out like that week. And, uh, and it made 65 million views in the first like 24 or 48 hours, something like that. So to me, the internet is their friend. That is where they are marketing. That's where they're spending a lot of their time marketing right now anyway. And it would make sense for them to put, uh, you know, the new trailer just online just one day and be like, all right, it's ready. Let's put it up online tomorrow or something. So to me, I'm okay with them waiting. It doesn't have to be in front of a big movie because obviously that last trailer got a ton of views and it wasn't in front of a big movie. So, you know. Uh, I don't think they really need big movies in this case. 
Uh, so yeah, I'm excited. Uh, hopefully they'll drop it any day now. That would be great for me because uh, I get to do a reaction video and I get to talk to you guys about it. And then you guys get to see at least some of the stuff that I got to saw, uh, you know, see at, at the at the Comic Con. Um, and then we have a comment here from Jesse Gromico, and Gr uh, Jesse says, "Hearing about the eyes, lungs, pancreas line makes me giddy because it's ripped straight out of a comic, uh, Amazing Spider-Man 374 to be exact." And and Jesse is right. I totally blanked on that. Didn't see that. You know, didn't remember that in the moment. But Jesse is right. I know some of the other. Uh, wrote me about this comment too but Jesse was the first one to comment about it and Jesse uh, pointed out that in Spider-Man 374 Amazing Spider-Man 374 that was the first part of the two-part story where Eddie Brock is like or maybe three-part story I can't remember uh, it was like maybe it was in the middle but it was like a, a story that was that leads Eddie Brock to going to San Francisco he's uh, he captures Peter Parker's parents he thinks by you know he's saving them by kidnapping him because everything Peter touches you know he, he dies around him and so this is Eddie's warped way of thinking he's doing the right thing and then uh, Eddie's ex-wife and Wang shows up and this is our first introduction to her in issue 375 I believe and then she gets in danger and Spider-Man has to save her and he saves her in front of Eddie and so Eddie realizes maybe Spider-Man isn't such a bad guy and maybe all that hatred towards him uh, is a little bit misplaced and so he goes off and says look I'll, I'll leave New York I won't kill any innocent people I'll just kill bad guys maybe but I'm gonna do it in San Francisco where I'm from and you can stay here and I'll stay out of your way and then they part ways and then lethal protector happens so then to know that they put a line in there that references a comic that came out, you know, before Eddie's Lethal Protector shows that they there are other elements from other history and other comics of Eddie's that aren't from Lethal Protector and Plan of the Symbiotes because those are the two main stories they're based in this movie off of, but it's nice to see them pull from other eras of Venom as well. A lot of the comments on here are actually about, uh, like Silent J's comment here and a couple other people were saying that they're excited because this could lead to a Venom versus Spider-Man thing because of something that was said at the panel. So I promise I will address those. Those are definitely comments I've been skipping here, but we are gonna talk about that in the video where we talk about the panel and the discussion that they had on the panel because they did mention you know, what the future might hold for this franchise. And I feel like there's a little bit of false hope in there, but then there's also some uncertainty that these guys maybe just don't know what's coming next because they want to make sure that they get this right first before they jump to where this could go. Um, so we'll answer all that stuff in a future video for sure. Um, but then we have Night Vision Wolf. Uh, Night Vision Wolf says, more and more news we get, I get excited and more excited, and I'm so happy it's most likely going to be an R rating. I'm hoping to see Lasher and Scream, and I'm so happy that Venom is a full monster in this movie. And I agree, I love the monster version of Venom. I know Todd McFarlane liked the version he drew with no tongue and everything, and then Eric Larson added like this crazy tongue, and then Mark Bagley added tendrils and other things coming out of him and, and amped up some things, um, and the teeth obviously for sure. I like all those versions, but I certainly like the vi the visual of a giant monster. Uh, that was my favorite thing when Mike Diodato was drawing Venom in the uh, Thunderbolts run with Matt Gargan. I thought Venom just looked very imposing and very scary in that run. He wasn't written 100% uh, particularly well uh, for the most part, but we'll talk about those when we get into those comic episodes. But I thought the visuals were fantastic, and I like seeing like even Sam Keith doing those covers for the Daniel Way run was very cool too. So I like the monster Venom as well. I'm a big fan. And as far as the rating it looks like we're going to get that and i'm going to talk about that more in the panel discussion episode so that'll be coming up later at the end of the week and i'm sorry i'm taking so long in these videos it's just like comic-con really tapped me out and my health has been in flux the past couple days and my work schedule has been up and down and i have a crazy couple days ahead of me with work in fact it's like already past midnight now and i got to be up in a couple hours for work so i'm doing my best to get through these comments and make this video and get it up to you guys as soon as possible so i'll have more venom stuff as soon as i can i promise all right, I'm going to end here with this comment. Uh, I, if I skipped your comment, I'm sorry. It's just there was a lot on here, and I'm trying to keep this video at, to a certain length. It's already probably going to be about 40 minutes, but I'm going to try to edit it down. I think I've recorded for about an hour now, uh, and I've read most of the comments, but I'm going to have to skip over some of them and kind of group them together. And some of them you guys asked similar things, like ratings and stuff like that. So, you know, hopefully you guys don't mind. But I try to get to as many of these as I can, and we're certainly way past the days when I first started doing this and I was only reading like 10 or 20 comments we're certainly way past those days so, but I appreciate that so thank you guys very much and I'm going to try to include as much of you as possible but even if I don't respond to you in these videos I will try to respond to you in the comment section for sure 
uh, but we have a comment here from the swordsman, and this is the probably the one person who disagreed the most uh, with like the assessment of, or like of me describing the you know the panel or not the panel but the footage we saw at the panel or they showed at the panel. Um, this was he had the most detracting points, and that's good because like I said, I want to read other people's people's opinions who are different than mine. Um, and swordsman is definitely that. Like we we are on the same page with some things, but sometimes we're not. And I like that he's honest with his opinion about stuff. So he says here uh, first, I want to consider the negative negatives and get those out of the way. Venom with an axe hand, while yes, Venom has shapeshifted his hand into weapons and shields before, he has never used an axe, instead preferring blades. I consider it to be a negative because the axe is so iconic to Carnage, um, which is true. Yeah, I get it. Uh, that is definitely a visual. Same with the spikes coming out of that lady's back, the other symbiote. Uh, those are big, big time Carnage uh, visuals. 100% agree. And to use it now for Venom, it does take away for when we see that in Carnage in possibly the next movie. So I, I totally feel your negative, you know, not negativity, but your, your negative critique on that and that being a minus for you. I totally feel that, um, you know, they're still working out some of those kinks. Maybe they'll take the axes away in visual effects. Maybe they won't. But uh, mainly it was it was Eddie swinging his arms and making weapons with them. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, some people might not like that, and, and but I see your point. I, I, I don't know, when you see the footage, I still kind of liked it. It looked cool, but I see your point. And so I'd love to hear what you think after you see that footage um, and to let me know if that changed your opinion at all because maybe you just thought the visual was cool enough and you were like, eh, it works for me. But you, got, you let me know. Um, no spider symbol, also a negative for you, um, which I get a lot of people are upset about that. But to me, like I said, it, logically it makes no sense. And luckily Ruben Fleischer almost quoted me uh, verbatim from one of my videos. I know he didn't. I know he probably doesn't watch the show. But uh, he said it makes no sense to have a spider symbol. The suit doesn't come from Spider-Man. And in the comics, that's what happened. And even though Donny Cates is trying his best to kind of retcon that and make the symbol on Venom suit something that's always been there so it was something that it when, when it went on spider-man it, it gave it to spider-man like hey i'm gonna put this white symbol on you uh, and not just enhance your current symbol and and you know feed off that i'm just gonna give you this symbol because we've you know we worshipped uh, an alien god or whatever D donny cates is writing in his story which issue four is coming out this week and we will definitely review and talk about it and we'll see where the story goes um but the no spider thing to me logically makes no sense if you put it on him because there's no spider-man in this movie but i know a lot of people don't care about that they want to see the symbol no matter what because that's the iconic thing about venom and his look and i totally get it but you know, so I understand it's a negative for you. For me, it's not a negative uh, because it only makes sense if Spider-Man's involved. And if he's not involved, then the symbol makes no sense. Um, the no heroes line, don't get me wrong. I don't want Venom to be a knight in shining armor, but I do want him to be an anti-hero, which is, in my honest opinion, a type of hero. I would almost give this line a pass if it wasn't for the IGN interview where the director calls Venom a straight up villain. Uh, and we will talk about the IGN interview in a future video as well because I think that was the other interview they did with uh, Tom Hardy and, and Ruben Fleischer there. So they did the panel and then I think the IGN interview. So we'll cover those later this week and we'll talk about that point. Um, but I, I feel you on that one. I, I, I think when they use terms like superhero and villains, like I don't think they're using them properly. I, you know, it's, it's weird because you, you know these guys are professionals, but sometimes when they talk in public, they don't they don't sound like they're professional. They don't sound like they're in front of cameras all day doing this kind of stuff. Um, because I think Tom Hardy also called Venom the, the best superhero in the Marvel Universe. And it's like, okay, well, he's not really a superhero either. So if, if we can't get too nitpicky on their words because I think they're just like on the spot and they have all these lights on them and they have all these people. And, uh, you know, and it's just a lot to deal with. And sometimes you just say things. And, you you know, I do it even in my videos. I'm like, oh, I should edit that out because I don't actually mean that. But then you're like, I leave it in because it's just me talking naturally and so I think that's what it comes so sometimes I'm a little lenient on exact things they say but then other times if you've seen me before I'm, I focus on what they say and it, it just depends on the context what type of interview it is and what's going on um, but for this one I don't know I'm, I'm kind of giving them a little bit of a pass but we'll talk more about it in a future episode for sure uh, and then Venom biting a person's head off I kind of blame Mac for this uh, and a way lesser extent Flash as well 
but Eddie's venom used to th uh, use threats of cannibalism, but every uh, Eddie tried to never actually do it and isn't really a cannibal like Mac. And that's all very true. But like I said, when you're adapting a character, it's like Batman. Uh, if you're going to make a Batman movie, you're going to pull in elements from different decades of Batman, whether it's a visual element or a type of Batmobile he has. You're like, oh, I like the, like in the 90s, he had this kind of Batmobile, so I'm going to put that as the Batmobile in the movie. But in the 80s, he had this kind of Batwing, and I like that Batwing better. And then, oh, his costume kind of looked like this in like the 2000s. So we're going to go with that version. It, to me, that's what this is. It, it's, uh, hey, we need to, this character has 30 years of history, and we need to showcase some of all that history in a, in some in subtle ways and some in like direct ways. Uh, and it, it's not about it being true to a certain version of a character. It's more or less like, all right, the suit has done this because yeah, Eddie hasn't eaten, but remember it's the same suit that attaches the Mac. And if their characterization, if their characterization of the suit in this movie has an edge to him, like when he bonded with Mac and just went full villain again and eat people, if that is a character element of the suit because you can't dis you can't you know discredit that thing as not being a character. Eddie's a character and the suit is a character. So if the suit acted like that in the comic, then it's not out of the realm of possibility to have him act like that in the, in this movie too, being attached to Eddie. Um, so they're they're trying to get in different eras of um, of Venom. And so to me, that's also not a negative because there are people out there that did read that run um, or did insert that in their head they might read the 90s book and be like oh venom ate brains all the time it's like no he never did he just talked about it but they in their head they filled in the gaps there it's like playing with transformers when i was a kid and i came up with my own stories and that's why a lot of people you know have such a fond memory of that you know that are my age because we became storytellers to play with those toys and i think that's what happened with venom a lot of people inserted things that he did and and remember them as truths now and uh, and then that kind of becomes part of the you know the mythos of venom so to me this is also not a negative but i i'm glad you you know shared your points on what you thought was negative but you also have some positive so let's get into that you know get into that as well and on the positive side you said from your description the trailer sounds awesome venom's dialogue which i could have sworn is from an actual issue which you're right jesse pointed that out earlier so you're right it's from amazing spider-man 374 uh, riot as the main villain sounds interesting as long as scream is still present in the movie uh, and then your question was does the symbiote seem forceful in its relationship towards eddie to you or does the symbiote work well with eddie like in the comics and the thing is um and how well do the veins break up the venom suit well the veins look great breaking up the black but i always figured they would because as a visual storyteller myself i thought it was trying to think of that and how it would look and i actually sketched out one day maybe i'll share that sketch with you if i still have it i might have thrown it away but i put it in a sketchbook and uh and which sometimes i rip pages out all the time and you know I don't know. Um, I should save more things. Um, but I've accumulated so much junk over the years that I actually purge a lot now um, so that when I, if I ever have to move, I don't have to move as much stuff. And I know it's just a piece of paper, but trust me, I've had stacks and stacks of paper before that I've moved around with me. Um, but anyway, I was like sketching it out and uh, I was like, you know what? This could look cool. Uh, this could look really good. And I thought in the footage I saw it looked great. But again, you let me know once you see it what you think of it. And as far as the relationship with Eddie, yes, I would say the suit is trying to get more out of Eddie than we might know in the comics. But I also don't think that's the case, too, because in the comics, it all comes down to interpretation. The suit really wanted to kill Spider-Man. Eddie really wanted to kill himself. And the suit kind of, when they bonded, kind of steered him towards revenge on Spider-Man. And, uh, and so, you know, Eddie was willing to take out his problems on himself. Like, he was he was willing to give up and that was his journey and the suit came in and said no with us you don't have to give up i'll give you the power to fight the person that you feel weak against and uh, i'll give you the power to i'll give you the knowledge of learning who they are so you know how to attack them and where to go after them and that corrupted eddie so i would say what they're doing what i saw where eddie and the suit were talking like face to face i would say that is in keeping with that type of relationship because the thing about swordsman and i that we disagree on is what type of person eddie is and what type of being the suit is and swordsman is is leans more towards eddie as the hero and me i think eddie was a uh, in the negative he was a bad guy in the beginning and i would say that's because corruption from the suit because eddie i think the way he was going to deal with his problems was suicide so he was looking for a way out and then maybe by bonding with this thing he says you know what maybe i won't fight spider or kill spider-man maybe i'll die trying and that'll be okay too of course i'm inferring things i'm i'm, I'm 
putting in my own you know projection into Eddie but I think that's what all of us do so to me I never took Eddie as a good person until later on in the comics and certainly after the last temptation of Eddie Brock which we talked about recently in the comics that was really the clincher for me that deep down this guy is good and he is maybe not selfish and maybe he can be someone who can do the right thing and can you know make the right decisions so it took a while for me to like Eddie as a character um, on that level and think he was a good person. Uh, but other people liked him right from the get-go and they didn't care if he was good or not, they just liked him. And then other people like Swordsman kind of lean more towards like the stories where he was painted as someone who was on the right path and got his life taken from him and was robbed of a brighter future. And so we all have our inter interpretations of the events that t you know tell the story of Venom, but I think that's what ultimately makes this fan base so great and what it makes any fan base so great. And as long as we can all share that and talk about it uh, without getting upset over each other, is, is key. And I know, Swordsman, if I'm misinterpreting your take, I don't want to speak for you. So if you want to clarify anything I said here and you're like, hey, no, actually, this is what I think of Eddie, or, please do that in the comments and we can continue it down there. And anyone else who agrees with you can definitely jump in in that conversation as well. All right, so thank you all so much for watching this video. I got to go to bed because my phone is about to die. I've been recording for over an hour and 15 minutes. Uh, so I'm going to try to cut this down the best I can to as close to 30 to 40 minutes as I can get. But I'm going to guess it's going to be closer to 45 minutes uh, if I want to include everything that I really wanted to talk about in here. Uh, so thank you guys for you know making this episode so big and so personal and getting your opinions in here. And for those of you, if I didn't read your comments, I'm sorry. I try to get to everybody, but that was a lot more than I expected and my phone is about to die and this video is already long enough so I promise I will try to shake it up and read some comments from different people next time so when we do the trailer reaction make sure you flood the comments in that video and I will make another one of these reading your opinions on the next trailer and we'll discuss it there so thank you all as always for watching my show uh, Sona again happy birthday I hope you enjoyed this episode and then Ariadne thank you for the intro Jared thank you for your intro and we will have more intros and more stuff coming to you guys soon and I'll try to get some other actors from the movie if I can or anyone who's worked on a movie anything I can do I'll try to make it happen for you guys because because you guys make this show special and I want to try to give something back and it's nice that these people are taking time out of their day to help me do that. So thank you so much for watching my show. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. I'll see you in the future. Peace.